Hey everybody, welcome to Tactical Under the Gun Edition. I am going away for another cottage trip tomorrow, so I have to come up with another video because for five days I'm gonna put it up. What I meant to say was I'm gonna be going away for five days and I want to put on another video because I don't want to leave you guys hanging without some OFA material to swallow for the next few days. So that's what we're doing today. I had planned another shitbox video. If you saw my last tweet, that's what it was all about, but the shitbox is actually going through a change. I found a better motherboard. I was halfway through my benches. I realized I didn't have enough time to finish tonight. So that's getting put on the back burner until I come back. Look for that next week. But this week's episode is another Compunomics edition. And today I'm gonna bash the shit out of Intel and tell you exactly why they deserve it. <laughs> Uh. All right, so we're going to do this Telestrator style John Madden edition. We're going to draw things for you and make point. No, I'm not going to continue with that. That's annoying and stupid. So anyway, remember my last video where I talked about NVIDIA die sizes, how there essentially were three classes of die size. And as you scaled up, you got better performance. And the goal of shrinking lithographies and smaller transistors was to pack more onto a die and get better performance. Remember that? Well, that doesn't really work for CPUs because of a little thing we call parallel processing. Now, parallel processing is just basically a thousand monkeys in a room writing a novel, right? So rather than having four big brains doing complicated tasks, you've got a lot of smaller brains collectively doing complicated tasks. So uh, that's how GPUs work. But CPUs don't work that way. CPUs are a series of much larger brains that work in conjunction to complete complicated tasks. And they're much better at certain things and worse than GPUs at others. This is why we have both. So as where NVIDIA makes a lot of money by shrinking lithography and by packing more transistors into a chip to make it a better performer. Now, Intel doesn't quite have the same luxury, you see, because their brains sort of have a fixed computational value. They can't get bigger and smaller in change in performance. They can add more cores to a CPU to make it perform better in multi-threaded workloads, but the only thing that improves performance in a single core on Intel chips is by improving the architecture, which is a whole different story. But in terms of the lithography and shrinking the transistor size, all it does for them is save them space. Now, why is this relevant? Well, in this video, what I am trying to demonstrate to you is that Intel is giving you the shaft, and I'm gonna show you how. Now here is a wafer. We'll make it round this time, okay? And as I said before, wafers are then cut into roughly grid-sized kind of fucking slicey bits. Go both ways, see like this. And uh, this is obviously not straight, but just bear with me, it's freehand. All right, so here's your wafer. It's been chopped up into a bunch of little cores. Now each of these is Intel processor cores. Four of these will go under the hood of a CPU, along with some other shit that's not really relevant to this discussion, to make the product that's in your desktop, okay? And they throw all the corner bits away. I never really understood why wafers have to be round. I understand why they are round in today's processes, but I just don't see why someone hasn't come along and found a way to sort of shave that material cost down and do away with all these little bits at the end here but I digress so here you have all the good things right and what happens when you shrink lithography you go smaller you find a way to make transistors tinier and fit more of them onto a processor of course with GPUs you can simply make the same size die and make them better but uh, with CPUs all it does is shrink the die size so you end up after a few generations when the die size gets cut in half wafers end up looking like this, more or less. And these cores end up being a quarter the size that they were before. And they are able to squeeze more of them out per wafer. So ask yourself this one important question. How does Intel get away with charging the same amount for four of these as they once did for one, two, three, four of these. If you got a one quarter shrink in material cost, die size gets progressively smaller as time goes on, but the price of these chips stays the same. In fact, it increases. It doesn't increase by much. I give Intel credit. Their prices have remained relatively stable over the last however many fucking years. But the bottom line is there exists a lot of room, at least in terms of material costs, to reduce prices for the consumer. Now you may be saying to yourself, aha, 
What about production costs? Maybe they've gone up. Maybe the actual fabrication of the silicon wafers has increased dramatically. Well, you might be able to make that argument for someone like Nvidia or AMD. They don't have their own in-house fabs, but Intel does. And Intel is a very wealthy company with a lot of cash on the books, so they can't cry foul with capital expenses and say, well, 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 we have a lot of debt to pay back. No, they don't. They have fabs. They have their own facilities. These costs are controlled. They are by design fixed. So why haven't consumers noticed a price reduction as these products have gotten smaller? Why haven't core counts increased in size? And there is one simple explanation for all of this. Intel ain't got no competition. See, if AMD is in the market space up here, and AMD's like, whoa, ho, ho, I am AMD. I am a competitive graphics card and a CPU manufacturer. I can compete with you. I don't know why AMD is French, but they are. Then Intel goes, hmm. Well, we, we saved money on material cost, and we brought down the size of these dies. Um, maybe we should try to undercut the competition and outsell them, push them out of the marketplace. Now, that would be how they would be going about business now if AMD were actually competitive. But AMD hadn't been competitive in fucking the better part of five goddamn years. So anyway, we'll close out with this chart. Now, this is courtesy of an Antec, and I think this qualifies as fair use because I'm using it for educational purposes. But all credit goes to them for compiling it. This information is otherwise publicly available. So here we have Conroe, which is a two core version, ended up being about 150 millimeters square in size. And of course it doubled when you went to a four core chip with Kensfield. And as time progressed, the die size changed based on the needs. Now, uh, 45 nanometers came along and there was a big shrink. And then slowly but surely, die size went up as they added other architectural items under the hood that made the overall die size larger. Cores themselves didn't get that much fatter, but things do change and new architectures do require additional real estate. So that explains this. And they, they would be fully justified in charging more money during this era because there was a significant increase in size. But the story, of course, changed when we progressed from Linfield down. So Linfield was a big die, but then we got a roughly 30% reduction in die size going from Linfield to Sandy again. No reduction in retail price despite a 30% drop in material cost. Maybe there were R&D monies here to be accounted for that we're not really seeing, being that we're not investors and we can't look at the books. But the cycle repeated with Ivy Bridge as we shrunk down even more and it once again saw no reduction in prices at consumer level. Haswell actually got a little bit bigger because it was on the same lithography, but once again, it was an architectural change and obviously required a touch more real estate for what was under the hood, which is per fine and perfectly justifiable. So we saw a minor increase in size, but once again, no price drop, despite the fact that they still had considerable room over Linfield to do so. And here we are now at Skylake, which is the smallest die ever for a quad core. And yet again, we are paying the same price that we paid for Linfield, adjusted for inflation, that we are presently paying for Skylake. So if there's one message that I'm trying to send with this video, it should be pretty obvious by now. And it's that I'm really bad at drawing middle fingers and that both Intel and AMD kinda need to go fuck themselves. Intel is just doing what they are built to do, which is make profit. They are in the business of making money and they didn't get rich by writing a bunch of checks, if you know what I'm saying. So you can't really blame them for gouging the way they do. You can't really blame them for taking the opportunity in the absent market space to capitalize and raise prices and get the most out of their consumer base with every generation that passes. You can't blame them for slow rolling out technology and not pushing the envelope because AMD is sitting in the back lagging behind playing with themselves. They're not doing us any favors either. Both of these companies need to get their shit together. What we need is a market space where both CPU makers and both GPU makers are on even footing and going blow for blow. Gamers benefit the best when there is healthy competition in the market space. That is absolutely true. It has been true throughout the annals of time.
and will continue to be true into the future. But anyway, I think I've made my point, so let's throw it back to Desk Jeff and close this thing out. And before anyone says it, yes, I know there are lots of factors I did not consider in my analysis about CPU production, such as the inclusion of floating point units and cash and all the other expenses associated with producing a die, but the bottom line is there definitely has been a savings in material cost that Intel has not passed on to consumers and that's the reason so now you know anyway as for future videos when i get back from vacation i'm going to get right back on the shitbox and film the shitbox video that i had promised in my last tweet it will involve the new motherboard and processor and will feature all of that including price updates it will still be sub 100 dollars for the whole system so don't worry about that i ain't breaking my rule and that's about it so let's wrap it up and i'll see you guys in about a week